Hello, everyone. Welcome to worship today as we gather here at Trinity Lutheran Church in Litchfield Park, Arizona. We're glad you're with us. Today, we're going to be taking a look at Psalm 139. Remember, one of the verses in that psalm says, I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I know that full well. Your works are wonderful. We thank God for our bodies. And so today we're going to be taking a look at um, our bodies and their value that Scripture teaches us, that they are just as important as our souls to our Creator, our Redeemer, and our Sanctifier. We're glad you're with us today. Please prepare your heart for worship, and we'll see you in just a minute. We begin our worship today in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son Jesus Christ to die for you and for his sake he forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our first scripture reading is from Psalm 139. 
O Lord, you have searched me, and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all of my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you know it completely, O Lord. You hem me in, behind and before. You have laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up into the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me and the light become night around me, even the darkness will not be dark to you, for night will shine like the day, for darkness is as light to you. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. How precious to me are your thoughts, O God! How vast is the sum of them! Were I to count them, they would outnumber the grains of sand. When I awake, I am still with you. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me, and lead me in the way of everlasting. Our second scripture reading is from the book of Romans, beginning at the first verse. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, it is mine to avenge, I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. And our gospel lesson for today is from St. Luke, the 10th chapter, beginning at the 25th verse. And behold, a teacher stood up to put him to the test, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, What is written in the law? How do you read it? And he answered, You shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, and with all of your strength, and with all of your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus said to him, You have answered correctly. Do this, and you will live. But he, desiring to justify himself, said to Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, A man was going down to Jerusalem from Jericho, and he fell among robbers, who stripped him and beat him and departed, leaving him half dead. 
Now by chance, a priest was going down that road. And when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he journeyed, came to where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion. He went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he set him on his own animal and brought him to an inn and took care of him. And the next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper, saying, Take care of him, and whatever more you spend, I will repay you when I come back. Which of these three, do you think, proved to be a neighbor to the man who fell among the robbers? He said, the one who showed him mercy. Jesus said to him, you go and do likewise. This is the word of our God. We join together now in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, and from thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. How often do you think about your body? Your body is important. As Christians, it is important that we don't focus so much on our souls that we end up neglecting the importance of our bodies. In fact, your body is as important as your soul in the Christian faith and life. God the Father in heaven has created you, both your body and your soul. God the Son, Jesus Christ, has redeemed both your body and your soul. God the Holy Spirit has sanctified both your body and your soul. Your body is as important as your soul in the Christian faith and life. The importance of your body is seen in the incarnation of the Lord Jesus Christ. Remember that incarnation is a Latin word that means in flesh. The Son of God was in flesh. He was incarnate. That, may, that means that he was a man. He had a body in order to be our savior. Jesus had flesh and blood, just like us, except he never sinned. Jesus' perfect life in his body sanctifies your body. Jesus' perfect death on the cross in his body redeems your body. Jesus' resurrection from the dead on the third day in his body promises that your body will also rise from the dead on the last day and live forever in the kingdom of heaven. Your body is important. Because Jesus had a body, he teaches us the value and the importance of of our own bodies. He has saved us through his life and his death and his resurrection. And he's not just saved our souls, but he saved both our souls and 
our bodies. Your body is important. When Jesus came into the world, he spent the first nine months in the womb of Mary. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit. He was born of the Virgin Mary. By his own conception, he has hallowed all wombs. And he has shown us the importance of un unborn children. That's why as conservative Lutheran Christians, we are pro-life people. Life begins at conception, like it did with Jesus. Unborn babies are people with bodies and souls. And neither a mother nor a father has a choice to kill their baby. The bodies of unborn babies are as sacred as their souls. Of course, abortion is a hot political issue. But more importantly, for so many people, it's a personal issue. Maybe you know that all too well. Maybe you have had an abortion. Or maybe you have encouraged someone to have an abortion. Many people who have been caught up in this carry guilt and shame with them for years and years and years. It's a terrible burden, and the guilt can be relentless. If that describes you, then hear this gospel good news. In Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Jesus' death on the cross took all of your sins, even the sin of abortion, and any other sin that creates guilt and shame for you. He took it all to the cross where he dies in your place. You are set free from your sin through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Today, if you are repentant and you have sin that's been troubling you for some time, if guilt is crushing you and shame is smothering you, then hear and believe the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ that's being proclaimed to you right now. You have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Your sins are forgiven. God promises he will never, ever remember your sins again. If your past sin troubles you, whatever it might be, and you are overwhelmed in guilt and shame, then hear and believe the gospel good news about Jesus Christ. That God in Christ forgives you all of your sins. God's grace covers over all of your sins with the blood of Christ. You are forgiven. You are reconciled with God. You have peace with God through the Lord Jesus Christ. Your conscience is cleansed through faith in the Lord Jesus. This forgiveness of sins is for you. The forgiveness of sins gives you new life. Every day is a new day of grace. You have been set free from your sin, from its guilt, from its shame. You have a new life to live. God does not remember your sins ever again. You have a new life now in both body and soul. Forgiveness of sins is a tremendous gift. Forgiveness and the new life that we have in Christ changes everything. It gives us a new outlook on life. 
And one area where you see that is with our own bodies. We understand its importance and its value. Your body is important. It is a gift from God's good hand to you personally. Consider some of the implications. Think about health and hygiene, diet, and exercise. You take care of your body because you realize it's a personal gift from God to you. Being concerned about health and hygiene, diet and exercise, shows that you understand that your body is a gift from God and that it's important. Think about how you protect your body from harm and danger. Of course, as God's people, we don't use illegal drugs or abuse alcohol or hurt our bodies in any way. But God has also given us great gifts to help us keep our bodies safe. He has given us doctors and nurses and medicine and hospitals and a vast array of professional um, medical um, vocations to help protect our bodies from sickness and disease and injury. Think about how the scripture teaches us um, that our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit, that God actually dwells in our bodies in a mysterious way. He's at work leading us and guiding us. This means that, that your body is sacred, that God lives and dwells and works in and through you. We learn in Scripture, because your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit, one specific application of that is that you avoid all forms of sexual immorality and homosexuality and transgenderism. To be involved in pornea in any way, shape, or form desecrates your body. It desecrates the temple of the Holy Spirit. You know, when we think about our own bodies and what Scripture teaches us about bodies, we remember and we learn that not only is our body important, but so is our neighbor's. That's what Jesus was teaching us today in the parable of the Good Samaritan. Jesus teaches us not to be cold or indifferent to our neighbor and his bodily needs, like that priest and that Levite were in the parable. Rather, Jesus teaches us to be like that Samaritan who befriended the man who was robbed and beaten. The Samaritan loved his neighbor. He went out of his way and he made many sacrifices to help that man, to take care of him in his body, to preserve his life. Of course, Jesus is the Good Samaritan. And we all are that poor man laying on the side of the road, half dead. Jesus went out of his way to help us. He sacrificed his life on a cross for you to set you free from sin and guilt and shame and even death itself. The devil and his demons and our own sinful nature robs us and beats us and leaves us half dead along the road. But Jesus rushes to your side and through the gospel good news, he binds up your wounds and he heals you. Because of his death and resurrection, your body and your soul are redeemed from sin and guilt and shame and death. Your sins are forgiven. You belong to God. You have the hope of the resurrection of the dead on the last day. Through faith in Christ, you have new and eternal life, both now and forever in both your body and your soul. Jesus is the Good Samaritan, 
who has helped and befriended us. And in the parable, he teaches us to go and do likewise. We are to love our neighbor and care for others as the good Samaritan cared for that man who is robbed and beaten and left half dead on the side of the road. We are to love and help others in their bodies as Christ has loved and helped us in our bodies. Through faith in Christ, you learn that not only is your soul important, but your body is as important as well. Finally, one other thing. Someday, your body will fail and you will die and your soul will separate from your body. At your funeral, these words of hope will be said over your dead body. May God the Father who created this body, may God the Son who by his blood redeemed this body, and may God the Holy Spirit who by holy baptism sanctified this body to be his temple, keep these remains to the day of the resurrection of all flesh. We are looking forward to the day of the resurrection of all flesh, the day of the resurrection of all bodies. Your body is important. And it's so important that God promises to raise it from the dead so that you can live and enjoy the kingdom of heaven with your body. That's our hope. That's our confidence. We believe God is telling us the truth. It's rock solid assurance that God will keep his promise even after we die to raise our dead bodies from the ground so that we can live forever in the kingdom of heaven. Your body, it's important. Unborn bodies are important. Your neighbor's body is important. Today, may you realize that your body is as important as your soul when it comes to the Christian faith and life. Amen. We pray. God, our creator, we thank you that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. We thank and praise you for our bodies, our souls, and our lives. We thank you for the care you have given to us and the gifts that you have blessed us with. Almighty maker, you have pronounced humankind very good. You have created us in your own image and knit us together in our mother's womb. Let us receive every life as your gift and safeguard especially those threatened by abortion assisted suicide, and embryo experiments. We pray this in the name of Jesus, who has redeemed our bodies. Amen. We join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.
Have a great week serving the Lord. We'll see you next week in worship.